So here's a little update for the rifle. I did, when I got the PC, or my new computer, I got all custom parts built in and everything. The case, or the box that the case actually came in, um, I had a bunch of styrofoam left over in that. So I used that, I cut it up, I measured my window, because it is cold right now, it's winter. So in order, so I'm able to spray paint so the house doesn't get mad cold. Um, what I did is I measured out the window and I cut off chunks of that styrofoam packaging and I glued it together, taped it up so I got rid of all the cracks and seams and then I lined it up on the window, traced a circle from my new fan so that fan sits flush up against it. It goes, it kind of goes in it a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna show you that real quick. So now I'm able to spray paint during the winter. This is the magazine right here. Cold. It's a little bit wet. What I did is this inner part right here, no one's really gonna see it because that doesn't matter because that's gonna go down inside here. No one's gonna see it. So what I did is I used my hot glue gun and I just filled, put a bunch of hot glue in there put some normal just this is normal thread that I used for my sewing machine put it in there let it dry a little bit at first I put a pinhole right there have the string go straight through but now I'm just taping it because if I need to move this out of my way peel the tape off I can go over to the table hang it from the shelf or whatever like how it is right here then I can bring it back over here do the same thing um, but I have gone over the rifle as you can see, it is really smooth now, but now I need to go over it with the sandpaper and everything. I need to go over it with the sandpaper, but this should come out really smooth, hopefully. Um, but I'm going to show you the thing. So this is the styrofoam that I was talking about, and you can see the duct tape down there, and I have the fan sitting in it, and I don't feel any breeze coming from this window at all. Well, I feel a tiny, 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 tiny bit of breeze, like cold air. I feel a tiny bit of cold, but that's literally just from this, like right under the window right here. There's a tiny gap because of these are the locks. Um, but yeah, the fan sits flush up against it, and I can just turn it on. And it doesn't take any air from the sides. It goes straight from there through there. You guys know the routine, how it takes all of it out. This half is almost all done. This half is just about all done. Everything's coated probably, I want to say six or seven times. I want to say six or seven times. This is probably coated over. So now once, because I did spray it, you can see it's a little bit wet, like right there. Once this is all completely dry, I'll take it, I'll flip it around. So this whole back half, it's gonna be out on this side of the table. I'll have to take the puzzles and stuff down or off the table so it doesn't have a chance of ruining it. But this whole half is gonna be sticking out this hole on this side because it'll be done. Then this whole rifle right here, or part of it, I can stick through the hole right there, do the same thing I was doing for this part. Spray paint it numerous times, get it all nice and smooth. Once it's completely done, like that half is all done painting and everything, then I'll sand the entire thing as one at one whole go. And then we'll go from there. And I already got like images for uh, as a replica or a model so I can match the sprays and everything to it and the paints and how it looks. Once this is done, now I will only have to be doing is the Beskar armor. I'll have to research to see if I can find any clothing that is the same or that uh, is made for Mando or just find scraps and make it myself right, so and be just home. finished doing a couple of coats of the primer on the actual rifle now I'm going over through it with one 120 sandpaper and I'm going to get it all smooth I just started doing this piece right here which is the magazine this one's all done, so now I can put this aside and start going through the entire gun, sanding it down, trying to get it all smooth and flush. Like, for example, this one, it's all smooth. Alright, so I just finished sanding everything. There's, majority of it is still f pretty much flat. 
Like, there are some spots sticking up here and there. But I think, like, everything on this half, I'll just keep going it over with the primer just to build it up so then I can sand it flat. Um, there are some spots, like, for example, right there, where it's not really flat because this is where one of the melting points or connecting points I had. So I'm going to use the dry dax to fill that up. There's a little bit right there. Basically, any spot that I used my soldering iron or my wood burner to melt these pieces together is where I'm going to go over with my dry dax just to try to make it smooth. Not smooth, but try to build up some more height than just using the spray paint because that will go over like that will build up all like really small amounts of layers. But if I use the dry dax, I can put a decent amount on, let that dry, sand it flat, then go over it with the primer and make it look pretty. I just got to touch up a couple things on this side and then that side has more stuff to connect touch up because this side I just have this one two and then everything on this half I just got to keep going over with the primer to build it up and then the other side there's more spots because there's more pieces that are connected down on that side or the other eh, that, that side of the rifle um but I think I might leave it kind of beat up in some spots like for example like right there um a little bit right there just to make it look like it's a uh, battle damaged or battle scarred i think i might do that but i'm just gonna go over it with the dry dax real quick and then i'll get back to you guys i find it's kind of easy is if you put a decent amount like that for example so it builds up past what you need and then use something like flat and straight that's kind of strong or sturdy, which I'm using a razor blade. And whatever side it has more height to it, like for example, this side had more height, this was dropped down a little bit. So I'll go from this side and I basically just scrape off, but keep it perfectly flat. Sorry. But keep it perfectly flat. So if you look at it now, now it's basically flush. But I'm just going to go around the trigger. So now that's per basically flush. And you can see the spots where I added. Like right here over is all the stuff filled up. This stuff was already built up. All right. Now I'm going to just flip, flip the gun around and touch up the other seams on the other half of the gun. And then I will let that dry for a little bit, and then I will come back over and start to do a couple more layers of the primer. On. What's up, guys? So I have been working on the rifle for a little while now. Um, I have been going back and forth by using this stuff, which is the dry dax. Um, I've been going back and forth with that, and then using the primer spray paint that's over there. It's the same one that I've been using. Did run out of the two cans I had, so I had to get more. Um, been using that a lot, so. So this is what it looks like right now. This part, it's, it's dry to touch, but it is a little bit wet. You can tell it's a different color. So I just need to let that dry for a little bit. And then once I'm, that's done drying, then I can go over with the sandpaper and go over this entire thing all the way down to that end. Everything is done on the rifle. And then here's the magazine for the rifle. It slides right inside like this. Um, this part right here is going to get scuffed up just from friction going in and out up against these two walls right here. So I might either sand that down so it's just just plain PLA or I might just leave it as is and have it wear and tear um, and I could if I wanted to go through multiple times and like because you could see print lines and everything and there was like gouges from using my uh, wood burner to like connect all these pieces because the pieces connected one right here one was right there one was right there and then one was straight down right here you can kind of see this one right here. You can tell there's one right there. But, like, you see that gouge right there? Um, there was, like, that on all the pieces where I had to connect. Like, you can see them definitely for sure right here. 
um, but I couldn't get anywhere close to it to like get rid of those marks. I tried best I can. Um, but all these pieces that are on the rifle, like the back part, like all the exposed parts, like there's a couple down here. I could keep going over with the dry decks if I wanted to, but I believe I'm, I'm going to call it kind of quits on it just because it'll give it its own like kind of texture of weathered textured. So like it looks like it's been used like this. You can see a little bit here and there, like you can see right there. There's some like right there, there, like these are all the pieces that were connected. Like just from here to here, it was two pieces. It was cut right down the middle. Um, the trigger still works. Trigger works. Um, this is supposed to be the mag magazine release. I right, push it back. There is, I have a spring inside here. Right there. I do have a spring inside here, um, but the this piece right here and this piece didn't fit properly, so I can't put the magazine in or out, and I couldn't like because what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be able to push push this back like so, and then this ma the magazine. So you would be able to take the magazine, slide that in like that. So this square piece right here slides inside the barrel, like all the way down here. So it goes just like this, slide that in, and you pull the piece that I was talking about a couple seconds ago back, like so. Like you, now the magazine's in. So it looks like it's all one piece. It's supposed to be able to go like this, pop it back, then I can lift this up, but it didn't want to let me do that. I don't know if it was just like off sizing for the print or whatever, but it didn't fit perfectly in there. So like I had to modify this piece right here and this piece. Um, if I remember, I'll go on my computer with you guys and I'll show you the mod, like the pieces that I modified and how I modified it using a 3d model on the computer just so i don't because i can't take this apart um i did think of it at one point going like this making this magazine right here be able to have like a, a hollow hole i did think about having like this magazine in here have a hollow hole straight through there so So I could take one of the bullets that it came with the Mandalorian strap part and sliding it straight in like that. But all I got to do is just sand the entire piece and then once that's done I can start painting it its final colors. Alright, so I'm going to use my sandpaper and I'm going to start sanding all of this down just to try to get it as smooth as possible. Once I'm done sanding, then I will be attaching the colors coordinated to how it looks in the Mando video or movie. Um, I'm not 100% sure right now what ones go where and what colors go in what certain spots. But right now I'm just going to be prepping it basically. Alright, so here's a little update on the Mandalorian. The impulse rifle or the pulse rifle sorry here's a little update on the mandalorian project the pulse rifle which is that long rifle that mando uh keeps on his back with that sling that i've made in my previous video that connects to this piece um so there's a little update for that as i was sanding it i don't know if i look, turned around and like my spray can fell over but at the end of it where the forks at the end of the rifle is like this one of the parts snapped off so i already did fix it um i'll show you that real quick so like one of these right here broke off as you can tell you can't really see any difference to it what i did was 
I took the broken part, say like this corner broke off right here. Uh, say it split down here, two parts. I used the blade carefully and I used protection. I have this, it's not cut proof, but it's cut resistant glove. I used that and I cleaned up. So if it was cut down right here in the middle, I shaved all of it this way and this way, at least like a set, like a, I'd say a centimeter on both ends just to make it flush or, or I sanded it and everything to make it look basically how it did previously and after that was done I used it in my Gorilla Glue epoxy which is almost out so I gotta go get some more and I put the two parts together I could let it cure for about an hour or not an hour not a day almost a day and a half once it was done I used this stuff, which is the dry dax I've been using. Um, if you're gonna be doing projects like how I am, I'm doing like the 3D printing and stuff, um, this stuff works and comes in handy. That you could use a wood filler as well. Uh, you can use a, a, a decent amount of items or piece, choices to use on these projects. But if you're not gonna be doing it as much, like for example, cause I don't have a lot of time because I'm either working or I have to do other stuff. Um, I don't really have a lot of time to do these projects. So this pe this whole thing right here has dried out a little bit. So when I first got it, it was as bright pink as this. Once it starts, it starts off pink, as it gets whiter, it means it's drying because that's how, what it does on the prop. So if I put it on this, it'll come out pink and then it, dry, it dries and then it'll be white. Then I sand it down, paint it, do all the stuff. The inside of this isn't this color anymore. It's like a off-white, kind of slight pinkish to it. So I don't know how much longer I'll be using that. I'm gonna probably have to toss it and get something uh, like a smaller tube. I have been seeing videos of people using Bondo. I could try giving that a, sw a swing. Um, but as of right now, I'm gonna be starting to spray paint the rifle. I am... Gonna be using this color right here, which is the espresso. So I just have a lot of stuff in the way. So this is the espresso color, satin espresso, and this is the exact same one that I use on a couple different parts. For example, it is the same one that I used on this blaster right here on the handle. Um, it is also the same brown espresso that kind of matches the leather strap or the his whole leather piece. I don't know if you can tell. It's almost the same color. And also what I used on my Thor's hammer, the leather parts on the handle. That is, it isn't leather. It's this, if you watched my videos. Um, but I'm going to- On the back start of the rifle. So, Right here is where the trigger is, so that's blocked off because that's going to be, I'm going to be using this stuff right here, which is the graphite powder, to give it that same kind of lead look as what this blaster looks like. Um, the trigger is all that, all the shiny like graphite, this whole piece is, and then there is this piece right here. This is supposed to be the same color as this, but I'm only going to do this part first. Also, when you're going to be using spray paints indoors or outdoors, depending on the airflow, make sure you're using a mask or some kind of respirator and make sure you have a ventilation or something ventilated. Like, for example, I have the ventilation going outside, so it takes all the fumes and everything outside. But if you're doing it outside, I would still recommend using this because sometimes you can still breathe in the chemicals, even though you're thinking you're not. Um, and it does get annoying if you breathe in the chem like this the fumes and stuff for this over a period of time your throat will start to get irritated uh sometimes your eyes will get bothered there's just a lot of stuff that could happen so if you're going to be doing this stuff make sure you have some kind of ventilation and some kind of uh, respiratory protection and now i'm going to be turning on the fan right the vent so I don't know how good you guys are going to hear me. And now I'm going to start using this spray 
feet. Oh, there. Alrighty. So as you can see, that's what the handle looks like. I am using my headlight as well to get through a little bit of darker colors. 